Now here's a movie that many of you may not have seen, but may actually own it without having realized it. Popping up on many public domain discs is a little movie called Memorial Valley Massacre. Think Friday the 13th crossed with Don't Go in the Woods. I won't give you an exact answer to that equation, but I will tell you that it is most certainly something that I do not approve of. Memorial Valley Massacre comes to us from 1989, and it certainly carries a pro-environmental message way before movies like Birdemic made it cool. Ma'am, you've got to understand that the natural balance in this valley is very delicate. Any invasion of the ecosystem by unrestricted vehicles like this one could destroy that balance. That sounds right. See, all you gotta do is just envision the movie's caveman killer to be an allegory for nature fighting back against those trying to destroy it. It's like if the wind from The Happening were portrayed by Ringo Starr. Of course, given that the film is from the director of something called Zadar, Cow from Hell, it fails in that message. I will stick with Fern Gully, thank you very much. It doesn't contain any of your sex and stabbings and doobie smoking. But how else does Memorial Valley Massacre fail? Well, let's shut the fuck up for a bit and give this movie a watch. Okay, so I've had our entire show's opening credit sequence to think about what the possible explanation for this is. A lot of movies have alternate titles. Uh, this one's is Son of Sleepaway Camp. Supposedly, it's some kind of international title, hoping to join the ranks of such greatness as Son of the Pink Panther, Son of the Mask, Son of Sam, Son of Godzilla, another Son of Sam. It Wait, what? But this one doesn't even stop at just an alternate title. Listen, it uses the exact same soundtrack from Sleepaway Camp. You can even hear the campers from Sleepaway Camp begin to speak. Those who those voices are coming from, this group of old people in a movie that does not feature a bunk nine nor a children's summer camp. This is where the line between alternate version and fan edit begins to blur. Oh, and who added starring John Kerry? Oh, uh, that's uh, that's the actor's name. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Here I was wondering why right wing critics began swift boating the film. This opening comes across like it's using music from another film in an unrelated slasher film that seems to be using stock footage from Pod People. Original music by Jed Fuhrer. That's funny. I thought he pronounced it Edward Billis. You know, as in the guy who did the music to Sleepaway Camp. Memorial Valley is basically the slasher movie version of Jellystone Park. A group of campers are waiting to get into the place, but they're being held up by... Cameron Mitchell? Really? Maybe his sleigh and reindeer from Space Mutiny crashed. As of this morning, we are without running water. Unfortunately, that means that we will temporarily be without restroom facilities. What do you mean, temporarily? If that were any more hammy, he'd be wearing an I Heart the Monster Hero shirt. Cameron Mitchell is wanting to build superstores across the valley, but with a construction worker turning up dead and a dog being found in a well, the workers decide to go home. But they let the citizens camp there anyway. That's perfectly fine. I ain't never seen nothing like this before. Well, animals fall down wells all the time. Ever known one to lift a 50-pound lid to do it? Ever see McGruff go deep undercover? Give him enough snossage powder and he could lift anything. I think Cameron wants every other shot to be out of focus, so we won't recognize that he's in the movie. Maybe that's why his character disappears and he's replaced with his son. What are you doing here? Who is he? He's my son! Well, you said that if I ever wanted a job on one of your projects, I could have it. <laughs> Bet you wish you picked a better Cameron Mitchell project, like Swiss Family Robinson. But seriously, it's about time they let the citizens into Mexico so we can get some authentic Taco Bell. Huh? Okay, I'm 
I'm not sure if switching the Sleepaway Camp music out and replacing it with Bubsy music was a good call. When did this get so fucking slapsticky? If this were any less slapsticky, they'd be singing about how their morning is inky dinky doodah. That's not what a tree sounds like! Oh good, now it's back to being a horror film. George, something wrong? Nothing, uh, uh broken window, that's all I want. Very scary. Broken windows are a bitch to fix. Unlike Sleepaway Camp, we get a good reveal of our killer five minutes into the movie. cue with the sleepaway camp music. If I squint my eyes and put a dick on it, that could totally be Angela's son, since that's what I'm supposed to believe by the movie's title. Who did Angela impregnate? Or maybe this killer is just Encino Man and he's gone ballistic at a 7-Eleven because they wouldn't let him wheeze the juice. The two rangers aren't exactly getting along, but at least one of them has a chance at getting laid. What's your name? Sangster? Call me David. Listen, Sangster, I... Sangster? As in, the Sangster. Is that a name or just something that Richie came up with on Saturday Night Live? Don't worry, I think these two will start to get along soon, once the one on the left turns into Puchinski. Or maybe even sooner. How are you feeling? Tight? Ugh, sore, but not that bad. Good. <laughs> I think that's what Jeff Stryker said after his debut. Unfortunately, they have a group of bikers on their hands. I think they're meeting up so they can discuss how they're going to harass Shelley from Friday the 13th 3D. Oh, hey, what they put Josh Hadley in the movie for? He's not going to like it. Beer. Mm, glasses. Suit. Never mind the bikers. There's something else going wrong. The snakes! For Christ's sake, dozens of them! All over our food! See, we all laughed when Arch Hall Sr. warned us. But now look at the mess we're in. We didn't watch out for the snakes. We're leaving. Sir, if you'll just give us a chance, I'm sure we can... It's too damn late for that! What if my kids were here? You know, that kind of begs the question, where are your kids? Rich loves Wendy's? I must agree. Large spicy chicken combo with a side of fries and honey mustard. I'd carve that love note onto a tree. But which one of us do you like better? Me or Rick? I don't know. <laughs> You're both sort of cute. Yeah, in a horse shack and the boyfriend from Troll 2 sort of way. Well, I'm Mo, and they're Larry and Curly. Ah, <laughs> oh, they're the Three Stooges, so that means at least these characters should be funny. Does it look sort of like you? I guess. Sort of dumpy and stupid? <laughs> now, just a minute. Kind of fat and weird? Never. He's probably out in the woods, humping Bambi. Ugh. Okay, so there's Sean Hayes, Will Sasso, and Chris Diamantopoulos. Got it. Are there any more unlikable characters this movie's gonna throw at us? Excuse me, are you aware that there's no off-road traveling allowed in this area? Oh, bug off, asshole. Hey, did you hear me? I don't see no stinking badge. Forget son of sleepaway camp, it's the son of Francis Buxton and Eric Cartman. What's going on here? Smokey the Bear's taking my key. While this movie has nothing to do with any of the Sleepaway Camp films, would you believe that this character is actually the perfect foreshadowing for the lead in Return of Sleepaway Camp? This kid is as intimidating as Uder from The Simpsons. I hope they don't make him run. He's full of chocolates. Come on, the wall is pointing guns right at him. Shoot, shoot! Oh shit, he's found Lindsay Lohan's cabin. Well, that sucks. Oh, wait, hey, it's just Tom Skerritt on steroids. Well, my real name's Gloria, but all my friends call me Pepper. Peppermance. Get it. And with that joke, this dog wishes it was the one from the well. As a matter of fact, Pepper and I were just getting ready to watch the Army-Navy game of 1958 on my VCR. Goddamn, what hell of a game. We'll stick around. Uh, I'd make a VCR joke right there, but I can't. I'm the guy who collects big boxes. So if Eddie Arbuckle starts riding around like a moron, and I think I know where this scene is going. Well, it can't go there. This isn't Son of Friday the 13th Part 5. I already know what happened to that movie's son. Yeah. 
No, no, this character finishes off quite lame. Wow, graphic. The killer is bleeding more than the victim. So far, the most dangerous thing to happen at this campground is wet clothes. And their fire is out. How are we gonna save the s'mores? Nothing like telling a ghost story to a group of adults. There a moment the call. Hanged by his heels was a boyfriend. Throat cut. Gutted. Arm rocking back and forth in the wind. The hell? Your story is more graphic than the movie. Even this guy's backstory is better than the one we're watching. I met him in the Nam, 67. Special Forces Solo Enemy Reconnaissance. Simply put, he's the best. Shit, we're drifting off into action exploitation. We can't forget that this is a slasher film. It's cold! Oh. Well, nice to know she had a wet shirt clause in her contract. Anyone else want to try getting naked? I have a fetish for shitting on people's backs, <laughs> so this is really doing it for me. You know, I took a wilderness survival course last year, and uh, a big part of it was about keeping warm without a fire. Oh yeah? What's the trick? <laughs> well... The trick is to film a sex scene. Yeah, yeah, so, um, if I were to put my body close to yours, Cheers. Close to mine. My god, if this movie were any more awkward, it'd be moment by moment. This is where it looks like she's pulling stuff out of his ass. <laughs> it's even funnier the third time. Also, no joke here, it actually does get more awkward because this version inserts clips of hardcore pornography. Well, they certainly made up for Thunderstorm Girl not taking her shirt off. This movie gets everything right from Sleepaway Camp. The music, the porn, that movie starred a bunch of 13-year-olds. I won't be surprised if we get some facial inserts with these three. Ooh, Tom, I like it when you take a like that. Cut it off. Okay, I stand corrected. It's turned into a fucking Tom and Jerry cartoon again. Only with an intruder. <laughs> Holy fuck, Son of Grizzly 2 is great! It's actually got a grizzly in it! It was nice of the grizzly to drop off Fatty Magoo to the campsite. Now they can stuff him and prepare him for dinner. But that isn't until after the ranger refuses to call the cops. Now handle it my way. Oh, that's great! That's just great! Now how are we supposed to call the police? I still got the short way. He's totally not calling the cops. Wait, he did call the cops? What the hell was that previous scene all about then? You no, know, George, as long as that bear is still out there, you got a problem. Hmm. We probably can't get any help to you out here until first of the week, if then. Thanks, Officer Bedroom Eyes, but you are no fake mustache cop. Oh well, better take him to the medical lab at the Silver Shamrock factory. Yeah, life's a bitch. I know, right? Some people are in Son of Sleepaway Camp, and some people have to watch Son of Sleepaway Camp. Everyone appears to be under the impression that the killer is a bear. Now, I'm sure you've all heard by now about the boy who was attacked by a bear. What? No, I haven't heard. What's this about a fucking bear? Why am I still camping here? Nevertheless, I'm leading a hunting party this morning to get the bear, so I would like volunteers to show up at the camp store. We'll supply rifles for those who don't have them. Or you could all just go home. And all of this over fucking Nell. The bikers want to finish off this bear, but they can't even finish off a shitty beer. If anything, they're just gonna piss off the bear. No balls, no guts, no. He's just mad because Jason Voorhees punched his head off in New York. They're gonna do what they want no matter what you tell them. Yeah, listen to the Gina Gershon trio there. They know they're bear hunting. It's a good thing that the ranger has Charles Bronson on his side. Now let's get to hunting. Let's get moving. Wait, 
wait, that's not the music from Sleepaway Camp. Don't you think this track would work so much better? You're the only girl. What's it matter? The editing here is about as good as their hunting skills. Aren't you keeping track? Track. I don't know about you, but all these trees look alike to me. You fucking botanist. Or, um, treeist? Uh, whatever. Hopefully, someone here knows how to shoot. <laughs> God damn it! This isn't a slasher film, it's cowboys and Indians! Wandering Tommy Wiseau looks so threatened. He better hurry because Hell's Bloody Devils here have found his home. Somebody live here? Who would have thought that these guys would find the final resting place of Jesus? At least this gives him a chance to fuck with Ega's remains, and they find his love letter that he wrote to Roxy. <laughs> <laughs> See, if you give any 90-minute slasher film an hour, something will happen. And just when you think that some kind of music should kick in, it doesn't. <laughs> the music is certainly conveying my emotions. <laughs> Nothing. Ah, oh, all he wanted was the Confederate General's skull from Night of Horror back. But too late, he's still gonna kill you. <laughs> Why does all the violence appear to be trimmed in a version that inserts hardcore pornography? No matter. Your ix is good as new. Now back to the churchyard. At least the bear is finally off the hook. It's been a man all along. No, no, I'm still sticking with the bear theory. That would make for a much more entertaining movie. You could have stopped it. It might be my son. Your son? Uh, so... Your sleepaway camp? Er... Uh, Angela impregnated you? This is the most confusing non-entry in the series, but thankfully the death scenes remain cut and paste. Seen it! Jesus, someone needs a timeout. Between Beware Children at Play here, destroying the Jeep, then the radio, and this, he's killed more machinery in this film than people. And the people he kills sure are easy to find. Shit! It's okay, it was just a trust fall gone wrong. I don't know how these people are gonna find the killer. He has a natural habit of hiding in plain sight. As in, there he fucking is, right in plain sight. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, death scene, but more importantly, the fuck was he doing there? You smell gas? Well, it's got a bigger budget than any of the other sleepaway camps, I guess. But how the hell did he know how to do that? And how did she shoot the knife into this guy's chest? Oh my. I feel good. <laughs> Ugh, this is like watching Manimal fuck Melody Anderson mid-transition. <laughs> and that's what should have happened in Breaking Dawn Part 1. Jeez, two more dead bodies. If only we had all fucking left and gone home. But then who would have been here to stand around and do nothing? Oh, hey, where the fuck have you been? <laughs> Remember when those two had sex? Sure enough, one of them steps five feet away from the campsite and gets set on fire. <laughs> Look, there's lakes all over the place. I'm sure he'll find one to jump in. It's 5 a.m. It's Memorial Day. Holy shit, it is! So? 
I'm more concerned with how Captain Caveman learned how to drive a fucking bulldozer. There he goes, destroying another truck. I really think these people are just standing in the killer's way of destroying every machine he can find. Let's set this guy loose on the Transformers films, please. He destroyed his father's shack, though, so now it's personal. You go on. Stay in. God damn it, George. I can't just leave you here. I'll be fine. Go. Now. Please, go now. I can do this. I will kill the caveman. I like where this showdown is going. <laughs> what the fuck? I guess eight hours later we'll get the showdown. Nice to know they walked into the next day. Maybe Father can convince him that he is the son of Sleepaway Camp. Are you Stephen Webster? I knew it. He's Lee Van Cleef! What? With that music, he should have been shot through the throat with an arrow at the archery range. Obviously. And this is how the fucking movie ends. You can try, but you'll never find him. Yeah, sure, you'll never find him. Unless you sneak up on him, or if he's standing on top of a fucking hill in broad daylight. Well, that was a colossal waste of time. That movie had nothing to do with Sleepaway Camp or proper filmmaking. Plus, according to the ending credits, the actual original title was Memorial Day, which explains that earlier bit of dialogue. Kinda makes me wish I had saved this episode for Memorial Day, but how was I supposed to know all that shit would happen? And with its open ending, will someone please tell me whatever happened to the kid from Mama? Here's hoping it's answered in the final Sleepaway Camp film, Return to Sleepaway Camp. Being a cinema snob such as myself, I haven't reviewed Return to Sleepaway Camp yet, but from what I hear, its ass stinks. That's a damn good idea. But I didn't hear a damn thing.